Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. Today we've got a really cool build. We're taking part in the Three Blind Mice Bad to the Bone Challenge. Well, I've got something really special planned today. We're going to turn this bone shaker into a time machine. Not only a time machine, but a Back to the Future time machine. I've got some really cool things planned for this car, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to put some gull wing doors in it, and we're just going to make it look like the Back to the Future machine. Now, the music in today's video was played by Hap Hathaway Solo Guitar Videos on YouTube. So if you get a chance, check out the link in the comments section and check out his channel. He plays some really great music, and I thank him for allowing me to use his music in my video. Go ahead and grab your favorite adult beverage, and let's join in with today's video. Here I've got the bone shaker, and I've got the Back to the Future time machine. I've already got the lines drawn out on the car where I want to cut the doors apart. This is going to be probably one of the hardest ones that I've done since I've started doing customizing on these cars. The uh, cutting of the doors with the jeweler's saw, it's a lot of fun, it's very rewarding, but be prepared to go through some blades. All right. Like I said, I drew out exactly where I wanted to cut for the doors. So we're going to get this car apart and get the jeweler saw and start cutting the doors. Here's the DeLorean. And again, I want to make these doors open up like the gullwing doors on a DeLorean. It's uh, going to be a lot of fun. Now we got the uh, engine here from the Back to the Future, the uh, time machine portion, and we're going to incorporate that into the bone shaker. Let's go ahead and move on. Here we're going to take the cars apart. Now I've already got the post drilled out. Now I still have to pry them apart there. Sometimes I use the automatic center punch to help take the cars apart. Just put it on the post and give it a punch or two and a lot of times it knocks it loose. Now on the DeLorean the engine in the back or the time machine portion is part of the post so that came out pretty easy. We have to take that post and grind it down to get it to fit. We're going to have to cut out that battery portion in the back there too. This is going to fit pretty good. I think it's going to be nice. Yeah, that'll definitely fit good. All right. Let's go ahead and start cutting with the jeweler saw. Take your time with this portion because, like I said, you're definitely going to go through a lot of blades here. Keep your blade taut, but don't make it so tight that it sounds like a guitar string. Go slow and cut straight. Once you get past this portion, you'll be able to undo the blade and put it inside the car and have it come up through the roof, and then you'll be able to cut and make your turns. It's a very difficult portion here. Now, depending on the width of the blade, you may see a gap in between the door and the body of the car. This is almost unavoidable unless you're using super thin blades, and when you do that, you're going to take the chance of snapping blades. <laughs> Like I said though folks, just take your time and work the problem. You just have to go slow because if you go too fast, like I said, you're going to snap blades. This is definitely coming along really well. Now that we've got the cut made all the way to the end of the door, we're going to have to feed the blade through the underside and make a turn as you slowly cut. I'll start with the front portion first. You just got to be patient with this, especially when you're cutting anything out like doors or if you're cutting out shapes out of the roof or anything like that. 
This is definitely something that will take your customizing to the next level. But in order to get good at it, you're going to have to practice it. This is coming along really well. Let's go ahead and move on to the next portion. <laughs> Someone is being exhumed. <laughs> I've got both doors cut out. That looks pretty good. I'm very happy with that. That turned out pretty good, a lot better than I was uh, hoping, so this is going to be excellent. I'm really uh, psyched up for this. Now that we got the doors cut out and we've got the body taken care of, let's go ahead and put it in the embalming fluid and get the paint off of it. Dip it in your citrus strip. I've got this little tray that I use, put it on the tray, and then every so often you can take a look at it and see how far the paint has bubbled off the car. Once you feel it's been sitting there long enough, you can take it to the sink, rinse it off, and scrub it down with soap and water, and then hit it with the ZEP degreaser. Let's go ahead and move on. Now's the time to start putting the doors in so we can get them to work. This is the part that took the longest time to figure out. Now I've seen some of the videos from the guys over in Malaysia and over in Thailand that do the really super high speed detailed versions of cars where they're cutting out doors and, and uh, panels for the engines and stuff like that. They do some beautiful work over there. If you get a chance, check out some of those videos. I made this hinge. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that to the door. And then we're going to use a piece of plastic to put over the inside of the hinge in order to hold it in place so the doors will work. If I had this to do over again, I probably would use one of those coated paper clips where you can cut off the plastic and peel it off. That would probably be a little bit easier to use. I just tried something different here and it did work but I would probably use those coated paper clips next time. I'll zoom in here so you can see this. See how the hinge sits on the roof and it also sits in the door. We're going to use this plastic to place in between the two hinges at the same time and then glue it to the roof of the car. It works, but there's better ways to do it. Let's move on. I got the doors glued in place, or taped in place, excuse me. Now we're going to glue the hinges to the doors. Here I'll use some gel type super glue, and I glued it to the doors, as you can see here. Then we're going to use that plastic, like I said, to go over the two hinges that are attached to the roof and get it to where I can open and close the doors. That's looking good. Let's move on. All right. I glued that in place with the, uh, the plastic I was telling you about, and the doors work. Look how nice that turned out. That's looking cool. 
I'm pretty happy with that. Now, like I said, there's a little bit of gaps in between the door and the body. That's because of the width of the blade and the turning action that you have to do in order to cut around the back portion of the door. It just takes practice to get better. Now, that little arrow there, that's the plastic that I put in place to hold the doors in place or the hinges in place so the doors would work. This is just mocked up to the body, but that looks pretty good. I'm very pleased with that. Now, when you put the car together, the doors appear like they're going to keep on going to the inside of the car when you close it. But when you have the, uh, the uh, interior in place and you have the car together, that naturally stops those doors from going any farther. So you don't have to worry about putting any blocks or anything on the inside of the door. I took the back end of the DeLorean and cut it off and attached it to the back of the bone shaker. Here's the engine all mocked up and the back of the bone shaker, that looks good, or the time machine portion. Meanwhile, back in the graveyard. Now it's time to paint the car. We're gonna use Spectre Flame Silver from the Redline shop. Now because we're using the Spectre Flame, we don't have to put down a uh, a base coat or a primer coat on the car in order for the paint to adhere. If you mix it up properly it will coat very well and it will stick to the car and it will give it an excellent finish. Now you can use primer if you wish but I didn't want to with this particular paint because it covers so well. Make sure you get the inside portions of the car, the doors, if you got fender wells or anything like that up into the cockpit. Get everything in there that you can and spray the car down entirely. And make sure you use mist coats. And build up your layers. If you uh, lay it down too heavy, it's definitely going to run and you don't want to do that. Alright, that looks great. Let's let it dry out and move on. Okay. I'm going to take off the skull from the front because I got something a little special planned here for the front of the car. So let's go ahead and sand off the skull from the bone shaker. Let's go ahead and speed this up a bit. Now that we got the skull shaved off, we're going to put a new face on there. My friend Grizz at Bearcat 3D Designs made this for me. We've got the face of Doc Brown. So we're going to use the face of Doc Brown to replace the skull on the bone shaker to truly make this a back to the future bone shaker. And when I get all through and all is said and done, this is going to fit perfectly. And here's what we started with, a Hot Wheels bone shaker. We took the car apart, we figured out what we needed to do to make it a back to the future bone shaker. We did a bunch of cutting with a jeweler saw, which was probably the hardest part of this project, to make the gull wing doors that actually work on the car. We painted it up, we gave it a real nice silver finish to go with the DeLorean look. And we took the face of Doc Brown and replaced the skull on the front of the bone shaker. This was a really fun project. Now I've got a few other bone shaker projects coming up and it's going to be a lot of fun with those too. But let's go ahead and take a look at how we finished up on this project. And this is the result. Look at how nice that turned out. My Back to the Future bone shaker. This was a lot of fun and it took a lot of thought. Now, you need to push yourself to, to come up with some ideas and have some fun with it. This was a lot of fun for me. Now, it was stressful, but it was a lot of fun. And I really enjoyed uh, working on this car. This uh, turned out really, really good for what I had planned. And here's the gull wing doors that open up. This definitely sets this car apart from others that I've done in the past and uh, it looks really cool now you could even go a little bit farther with some of the details and put some wires on there like for the back from the back to the future car etc 
but I want to thank the folks that helped me make this build possible. First, Bearcat 3D Designs. Grizz definitely went above and beyond when he came out with this dark brown face that I mounted on the front of the bone shaker. It turned out excellent and I'm very, very happy with it. I want to thank Again, Grizz at Bearcat 3D Designs, Sam Ed Wheels for those great wheels on the car, the Redline Shop for providing that wonderful Spectre Flame paint, and all the products we use from Spray Gunner. This was a lot of fun. Now, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and if you got any comments or questions, just go ahead and put it down below. Check out the videos from Half Hathaway on his YouTube page in the comments. Check out the three blind mice builds also for everybody else that participated. My name is Paul with Diecast Graveyard. Thank you so much and have a great day.